Hello there. Uh, this is going to be a, a very short um, crash course in the Wall Street crash. Okay, and basically some of the ideas behind uh, how the the market crashed and what it's all about. Okay, it's not in depth, but it'll go through some of the key factors. Okay, and you can see today that um, uh, this be the first video here for for Belfast High School where uh, I'll, I'll be moving to. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so this here is all about the Wall Street crash, one of the key pivotal events in the 20th century and something which uh, I think we have to bear in mind today as well too. Alright, so first of all we have to look at the idea of like stocks and shares, okay, and especially shares itself. Um, what exactly is a share? Well, a share is basically this, all companies uh, of any size whatsoever, they all need money, they all need finance, it's almost like oxygen to keep them expanding, to keep them growing, to keep them investing. A company doesn't uh, grow unless it invests and continues to thrive that way. Okay, so even Ford here, it needs to have money to open up new factories, to uh, design new cars, to try to figure out where it's going to get more and more money from. One way they can actually achieve this is by offering shares in their company. Okay, so they can offer shares in the company. In this case, let's consider Ford, big, big 1920s company, huge company. All right, so what they can do is actually invest in this. So they're looking for investors to come in and they can actually buy a share of an investment in, uh, in Ford, for example. Okay, so for a certain amount of money, they can get uh, a number of shares. It could be a small amount, it could be a big amount. Uh, the company then is gonna use this money to expand. So uh, obviously if it's lots and lots of money coming in, it can expand, it can build new factories, it can uh, invest in new people, new designers, it can actually have lots more new models, it can invest in marketing, and that's going to lead to more profits. That's what the key goal is here, to get more and more profits. Okay, uh, If you can do that there, then everybody's going to be happy. Alright, so they've got the money from the investors here, the investors have got a share and it's going to like really help in terms of like uh, building factories and then really boosting the assembly lines that they would have at this stage as well too. All right, so what do investors get then? Well, investors actually get uh, this, they get dividends. So as a company expands, it obviously makes more profit and that profit is then, or share of that profit is passed then down to its shareholders, okay? So if Ford, as it did in the 1920s, made you know, uh, cars, I think it took 90 minutes to make uh, one uh, car, uh, and it's booming, uh, it's booming business this time, and they're actually pumping out lots and lots of Model Ts, and they're making a lot of money, okay? And if it's making a lot of money, it means that uh, the shareholders can then get a dividend, they can get a share of that profit, uh, and they get that on a regular basis, okay? This is for the long term, if you think about this as a long term investment in the company. So the more profit a company makes, the greater the dividend, and they're going to be looking for companies that are going to make more profit. All right, so you also have, though, people called speculators. Speculators are kind of like gamblers, and they're looking for companies that they think are going to boom in value, and they're hoping they're going to rise very quickly, and they, they can then um, buy at a certain point and share or, or sell their shares at a, a point where it's a lot more valuable. Okay, so they're looking for companies that they know are going to do very well. And the 1920s, you're looking at automobile companies, you're looking at electrical goods manufacturers, uh, you're looking at radio manufacturers, okay, and even real estate as well too. Okay, so um, these investors are obviously looking for um, the share of the value of a company to go up. Okay, so if they buy a share at a certain price, say a dollar, they would hope that within a couple of months that might go up to a dollar twenty, and if they've got lots of shares, that's going to make more profit. Okay, just be aware shares can go up and they can go down. Okay, but they're going to be quite careful, or they should be quite careful about what they're going to invest in. So they try to work out which companies are going to do well. They invest in those companies, and their hope—it's not about dividends really. Their hope is really on cashing in on a profit and um, selling their shares to somebody else who's going to then buy and, and the hope that the share is going to go up even more. Okay. Um, this is all based though on greed, okay? So a lot of it's based on greed. It's based on profit, surely. But um, in the 1920s, it's about getting rich and getting rich quick, um, living the American dream. And share prices were going up and up. It seemed to be no end to the, the, um, the extent of how they were going to grow. And it looked to be a quick way to make a, a quick buck, okay? Um, 
So stock market speculation then, what they do is it drives up prices. Now the danger here is this, that the value of forward uh, might be a certain amount, but speculation can actually pump that value up to values that are way beyond what the actual value of the company is. Uh, and there's a real danger of that stock then being overvalued, that those shares being overvalued um, and bearing no reality to the actual um, value of the actual company itself. This is what happened during the 1920s. All right, so it inevitably led to a crash. So the 1920s, absolute over speculation in the market. Everybody was buying shares. It wasn't just a rich man's game. Everybody was investing and investing in shares. And what they were doing is they were buying this, uh, they were getting money for on the, you know, the cheap credit that they actually had in the hopes of being able to make a quick profit. And usually they did make this profit. So the banks were more willing to lend out because they thought this is, this is the way it's going to make more money. And they're more willing to, to lend out. And over 10 million investors, 10 million Americans had invested by 1929. It was so popular that even if you went to the barbers or went down to the grocery store, there were usually tickers uh, that were able to tell uh, um, the prices of the shares and people would keep an eye on their shares to see if it was going up or going down. Um, the economic reality, however, by 1929 was much different. The 1920s had seen a huge boom in value, a lot of that based on some form of reality, but by 1929 there's real storm clouds emerging. Consumer confidence began to slide a little bit. You could see house prices fall, particularly in Florida, where there's uh, you know glut in the market. There's huge overproduction of goods uh, in agriculture. There's overproduction of wheat and lots of grain. Uh, which led to falling prices and the same thing happens in cars and in consumer goods there's just a glut people can only afford so much uh, and if you have an overproduction of cars or of electrical goods that's going to bring the price crashing down uh, because there's an oversupply and that's exactly what happened and people were able to get a sense of this here and then the confidence in your company that you've got shares in begins to teeter Okay, and people lose confidence, and the more they lose confidence, the more there's a danger of um, a market correction, okay, as it's called. Now, a market correction might come down uh, quite slowly, um, but unfortunately, sometimes this over speculation leads to it um, leading to a burst, a burst in the value of the actual um, the market itself, and this brings all shares crashing down and this is what happened in the Wall Street crash of October 1929 and on Black Friday in particular and um, the 24th of October over 13 million shares were sold in one day it's a massive massive sell-off um, of shares and share prices plummeted everyone wanted to sell very few wanted to buy everybody wanted to make you know to, to try to keep their prices as stable as possible remember these people have bought these shares on credit, so they see their, you know, their money, their assets completely crumble, uh, and they are able to see that they're going to actually owe a lot of money and have very little chance of being able to pay that back. So there's lots of reports about what happened in Wall Street in the Wall Street crash and what happened to people's lives as well too, and how some people actually ended their lives, uh, seeing what was going to uh, occur to them in terms of the economic crash. And what this leads to is the Great Depression. It's not an it's not immediate, but uh, within a year, it's going to lead to a real, real plummeting uh, and pummeling of the American and the world economy, um, especially in the United States and in Germany as well, as you as you probably know as well too. Very badly hit by this Wall Street crash, um, and the very vulnerable area of the market is obviously banks. There's lots of banks, highly unregulated at the time, and they're going to crash, and they're going to crash people's savings in them. They're not getting the money back from all their loans, and this leads to a complete um, crumbling in confidence of the American economy, which leads to uh, the Great Depression. It's going to take it to the 1950s to the American stock market builds up to the similar values of the 1920s. Hopefully this is useful. Thanks for listening.